up guys welcome to the intuitive teacup for another tarot deck review we are going to be looking at sasha graham's tarot of haunted house this deck is awesome it is so badass i have so many good things to say about it but first you're going to get to preview every single card in this deck in the slideshow i've created for you after that we will break it down into more specifics we'll talk about the size the illustrations why i love it pros cons etc if you are just here for a collective tarot reading Timestamps are down below so you can hop around to different segments of this video. Let's get started. So, Tarot of Haunted House is a traditional 78 card tarot deck. It comes in a traditional tuck box with a little white booklet. And like most decks released by Los Scarabio, this booklet is printed in black and white with no pictures. Uh, there are translations in French, Italian, Spanish, German, and English, of course. And what is cool about this deck is that it uses a narrative format. So it follows a character around who is named Raven Wandsworth, uh, and it describes her journey through this haunted house and all the characters she meets along the way. So while you can always choose to read this deck intuitively, if I were to say pull the star card, I can look up in the book the correlating text, which reads the following. Number 17, the star, Raven's Catharsis. The storm has passed, peace is restored, Raven finds new clarity, inspiration, tranquility, hope, optimism, harmony, cosmic cleanse. The booklet also includes a suggested three card spread that is unique to this deck. We will be using that later at the end of this video for the sample tarot reading. You can also hop right to it if you follow along with the timestamps. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions about this romance, gothic, horror-themed deck is that it's strictly novelty. You know, you can only use it around Halloween or Scorpio season. It's even marketed that way, interestingly enough, online. It's always paired with, like, the Halloween Oracle. So that's all fine and good, but I do want to underscore, I actually use this deck every day. I use it on general readings on YouTube. I use it in personal client readings, and that's because I think it really does speak to deep psychological emotions and human behavior, and that's exactly what I'm looking to get out of a deck when I do tarot readings. Um, so maybe it's my Scorpio moon speaking, but uh, this is an absolute must for me. It's a standard deck and I use it every single day. This narrative-themed deck that takes us on a journey of discovery through a haunted house was actually greatly inspired by gothic romance novels from the 60s and 70s, as well as Hardy Boys novels and Nancy Drew books. Author Sasha Graham uh, writes on her blog that she was greatly inspired by the Italian horror movie from the 70s called The Legacy. And a lot of the classic tropes we know from horror movies are utilized and illustrated in this deck beautifully from the artist Mirko Pierfrederici, who is well known for his illustration of Marvel comics. 
So Sasha Graham is the author of this deck. She also released the Darkwood Tarot in 2020 and is an author. She's released books such as Tarot Diva and 365 Tarot Spreads. She's a pretty well-known name in the tarot community. She teaches a lot of tarot classes and seminars online. You can find her on YouTube. She's actually a Scorpio born on Halloween, which is so cool. And interestingly enough, she's also appeared and acted in a few low-budget horror movies. Like most traditional tarot decks, the Tarot of Haunted House is a 78-card deck. It is borderless and annotated with Roman numerals at the bottom. There are 16 court cards, 22 major arcana, and 40 minor. In keeping with the Haunted House theme of this deck, uh, each major arcana does have its traditional name that we know in tarot, but uh, it also has an alternative name. So for example, the Lovers is called the Enraptured Couple, the Hermit is called the Groundskeeper, the Emperor, the Man of the House, even the Chariot is referred to as the Chauffeur. These are some small but fun details that enhances the overall theme of this deck. Some smaller details are given to the minor arcana as well, which are traditionally broken up into wands, swords, cups, and pentacles. So for example, the pentacle suit cards 1 through 10 is actually referred to as the legacy of witches. Uh, the cups cards 1 through 10 are referred to as angels of inspiration. To be clear, these are just some fun details. You can easily use this deck without referencing the storyline of Raven and the names given to all the characters she meets along the way. It's just kind of a fun bonus that is included in the booklet, and should you choose to want to be faithful to what the author has provided, it gives you a little more insight in your tarot readings. The biggest learning curve with this deck is for those who are not familiar with tarot, the front of the cards do not tell you in words or any explanation what it is you are looking at, so you will have to refer to the Roman numeral and reference more information from the booklet. And regarding the court cards, be sure to reference the symbol that is printed at the bottom of each card. The pages are represented with helmets, the knights by horses, and the crowns of the kings and queens will differ ever so slightly in shape and size. You can also distinguish king from queen by the heteronormative depictions that the illustrator chose to use in this deck, i.e. queens are female, kings are male. I personally like to read intuitively, so while the narrative is fun to read and familiarize yourself with, it certainly is not going to dictate how you use these cards or suffocate your comprehension of tarot or how you learn this deck. The back of these cards have a really cool mirror image of a castle, so if you do read reversals, this deck certainly allows for that. Though do note, the booklet does not provide alternative messages for reversals. Every day I'm shuffling. So let's go ahead and compare uh, Tarot of Haunted House to the traditional Rider Waite deck. I use that as a standard of measure as most tarot readers out there are fairly familiar with Rider Waite. So this deck is ever so slightly smaller in its scale. It measures roughly two and a half inches by four and three quarter inches, while Rider Waite measures two inches and three quarters by four inches and three quarters. So if you are a tarot reader who likes to mix and shuffle in different cards from different decks, you can certainly do that with Rider Waite, but it might not be a great system because the lines don't match up exactly. I do think it's important to note, though, that Tarot of Haunted House is not an unusual shape deck. In fact, many decks produced by Los Scarabio are that exact size. And side note, Tarot of Haunted House is actually the exact same size as Triple Goddess Tarot, which you may recognize from the deck review I did last month. If you haven't yet checked out that deck review from me, I highly encourage you to do so. So overall, this is a very user-friendly tarot deck. Um, I really like um, the size and shape of it. It's easy to hold in your hand. It's easy to shuffle. I'm by no means an expert on paper stock, but I believe this is what you would call matte finish. It doesn't have a lot of gloss or sheen to it. Um, but for me, I, it's important to me that my cards are pretty rugged and can withstand and endure uh, a lot of use, and this deck can certainly do that. So I did a quick little search just to see what this is currently retailing for. Online, it's about 17, 18, 19 bucks, somewhere in that window. Um, when I bought it back in 2017 or 2018, uh, I got it for about the same. I think mine was like 16 or 17 bucks. Um, what's important to note, I think, is because this is kind of marketed as like a Halloween deck, it may be hard to find on the shelves in retail stores uh, unless it's around that time of year. Otherwise, your best bet would probably be to find it online. So again, I'm recording this in February of 21. It's probably going to be about 18, 19 bucks. And for me personally, I think that's about fair. I certainly wouldn't pay much more for that because it's simply just a, a tiny little tuck box, little standard basic booklet. So yeah, that's about 19 bucks to me.
Like a lot of decks out there, Tarot of Haunted House does make reference to and pay homage to the original Rider Waite deck, um, though some of the illustrations do differ in a more creative direction, as you can see with some of these examples shown. I think it's super fun to go through this deck and see where the artist took some inspiration from classic horror movies that we all may know and love. And of course, if you're brand new to Tarot, you can learn on this deck, uh, but really you can learn on any deck. I always recommend using one that you just feel called to use. There is no right or wrong. I think it is common practice to learn and become familiar on Pamela Coleman Smith's illustrations and the Rider Waite deck, but you certainly don't have to. There's no reason why you couldn't learn Tarot on this deck. So all that being said, I absolutely love this deck. I highly endorse it, not getting paid to do so. It's just one of my favorite decks. I use it all the time, and that's why I wanted to share it with you here in this deck review. Hello, Tarot Watchers. We are going to do a general collective reading, okay? Uh, we are going to use the traditional three-card spread uh, with the suggested uh, reading that comes with Tarot of Haunted House which is fear to be discarded, action to be taken, attitude to be embraced. So let's go ahead and tap into the collective energy. This is timeless, guys. So whenever you stumble upon this reading, feel free to listen and take away messages. You're accountable for all responsibilities, actions, and decisions. Take what resonates, release the rest. Here we go. Collective messages, collective messages. All right, so you have the Empress. You have the Ten of Swords. And the Fool. All right, bottom of the deck is the Three of Pentacles. So let's go ahead and jump into the collective reading. So let's look at the Empress card representing growth, as well as possibly a release with the Ten of Swords coming up after it. You are a powerhouse. You hold great power. You are a vessel of love and abundance. You give the gift of life and conception, and you are a powerful creative being. There's something manifesting inside you, a piece of your light and your creativity, your spark, your magic that you are meant to bring out into the world. But right now it exists only inside your head, only inside your heart, or possibly only inside your bedroom. You will very likely need to leave the comfort zone and take some sort of risk or leap of faith to share this gift. But with this new blessing and gift, you are being asked to let go of something, something you may wish to bring with you on this next big adventure or endeavor. But the universe is saying no. It will only weigh you down. It will hinder your ability to start fresh. Any ten in tarot is an ending, and the ten of swords indicates it may have been a long time coming. Many lessons have humbled you, but also empowered you with new knowledge and ideas that you can utilize in your path forward. You may be fearful to abandon some part of yourself that you've known for so long and become accustomed to, but what you need is to free yourself from this past narrative. You're a new person now, and with that, there has been an internal transformation, and there will be an external one. Trust that the universe is asking you to let go of something that you no longer need. With the Ten of Swords, it could be false beliefs. It could be other people's ideas and opinions. You trying to live out the narrative to please another person. But now it's about turning inward and asking yourself what it is that you want and what it is that you believe. That is what you're going to take action on. The high vibrational message of the Ten of Swords is that it is representing the sun in Gemini. Growth, renewal, creativity, spirituality, playfulness, a childlike mentality. In a sense, the universe is saying, trust me, it's okay to get up from this. And there is also much value placed on saving yourself, getting up one last time and telling yourself that you can do this. So what's stopping you? Do you see how the light that the Empress holds in her hand will eventually become something much greater, something perhaps she can't even envision at this point? It will eventually, in metaphor, become the sun in her sky her reason for being and living, her inspiration, something that provides her guidance, a reminder of her faith, her courage, and her strength. While the Empress excels at nourishing other people, is it possible that somewhere along the line she forgot to nourish herself and her dreams? Pursuing her dream and vision honors her value and worth. 
She will have to go outside to fully embrace this new chapter and discover how much power she actually holds. She has so much beauty and light to put into this world. By keeping this gift to herself, she is denying the world of all she has to offer and the satisfaction she will feel by sharing it. Don't be afraid of your own power. Don't hide it to make others feel more comfortable or to not appear egocentric or self-centered. It's not about that. This is about honoring who you truly are, recognizing your own identity, and having a sense of pride, a level of confidence, and maybe even a sense of humor about yourself. Wouldn't it be funny to discover that the person you were actually running from this whole time was yourself? Embrace your shadow side so that you can learn from it, and then step into the light. Uphold the title of Empress proudly and confidently. You are birthing something great into this world, giving birth or conception to a new role, new relationship, a new responsibility, a new undertaking. The universe has chosen you specifically. This is your path. This is your calling. This is your destiny. You are a vessel of light and love and magic, and you can no longer be contained. It's time to grow and expand. But do you believe it? Do you doubt your capabilities? Does your negative self-talk lead to self-sabotage? Does fear keep you trapped in the past? Is there something you need to make amends with so that you can fully embrace this new chapter and not bring the past with you? The universe invites you to bring the lessons you have learned thus far, but nothing else. A key word to the Ten of Swords is detachment. It is healthy to reject things you once held as your truth when you awaken and realize that your situation has changed. You are allowed to change your mind. You are allowed to go in a different direction. The only person keeping you there essentially is yourself. At any moment in time, you have the power and authority to change the narrative. You seem to be yearning for nourishment, for oxygen, the ability to thrive in the real world. But it's awfully safe inside, isn't it? It's cozy. You've adapted. You know what to expect. You know what is familiar. But with that, nothing will ever change. It is static. Your soul longs for something more. Do you see how this long flowing gown is actually weighing down this woman who's trying to cross the ocean? It would be a lot easier if she wasn't trying to bring something with her that was in fact slowing her down. A baby comes into this world with no baggage, no clothing, no defense mechanism, nothing to protect itself. It is vulnerable. It has nothing to hide. It is not yet aware of the cruelty that exists in the world or the disappointments it may face. And that is exactly what the Fool card represents. Innocence. Hope springs eternal. If you don't like the naked metaphor, look at it this way. It's time to shed the snakeskin. Perhaps some of you will choose to reflect this new change in your life, both internally as well as externally, a spiritual makeover that matches your new vibration. Both Libra and Taurus are represented in the Empress card. It is a card indicating that planet Venus is present as well, the planet of love, balance, and harmony. Where do you need to recalibrate your emotional energy, your mental energy, your spiritual energy? Remember to love each and every part of yourself. You are not damaged goods. The universe loves you and you are meant to do great things here in this lifetime. You are being called to step up, to take control of your own life, and make strides, if only small ones, towards an accomplishable goal. Just taking one baby step is progress. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle. Be patient. And as always with the Ten of Swords, remember, your wounds are your wisdom. Sometimes we have to go to the dark places and reach the lowest of lows to remember what it is we want to transform in our life and to aim higher. Protect your love, protect your light, protect your power, but do share your gifts with the world. A new day is dawning. What broke you before will not break you again. You are all the wiser now. You are stronger. You are more equipped to deal with similar situations in the future. This is just the first step in facing your fear. With your back to the moon and your face to the sun, it only gets bigger, more beautiful, brighter, and happier. Feel the sunshine on your face. This is how the universe reminds you, you are alive. And with the Three of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, it reminds you, if you are ever to fail, and you will, remember to try, try again. You are just starting to build and accomplish things in your life. Anything you can dream is achievable. Please do remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you very soon for more tarot readings here at The Intuitive Teacup.